All right, so today's project, we're going to uh, install a bunch of speakers for Matt's theater room. I think we have eight in total to install in this back wall and the side wall. We got two, two that go overhead here, then two in the soffit, and then two out here that are on those uh, pedestal brackets like this, and then two more right here and here between the acoustic treatments. And then we've got to run wiring up in the attic. There's eight, eight individual wires that got to come down to uh, where this box is here. Well, actually, it's not even a box, just a hole with a cover for a, uh, a bracket for a cover. So those will all get run down and back into the, into the uh, I guess it's a receiver. So uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be too hot today. So attic work won't be as bad as I had thought it was going to be. So anyway, we'll get started. I think I'm going to start in the ceiling first. We've got to make sure there's, there aren't any uh, uh, ceiling joists in the way because we want them centered uh, between the two uh, cans here and about 10 inches off the crown molding uh, on both sides so I'll get up there and lay out find out where where the uh, joists are and and hopefully we'll miss those and we can center them up whatever whatever we have to do if we have to offset them hopefully they'll be that we'll have to make them even so get up there and do that now and and see where we are they run this way so we're good tools and no so what I have to do is I'm gonna go upstairs there's some blocking in the soffit and we're gonna end up staying just to the edge of the blocking so I'm gonna poke this through from the attic side so I can see it down below and I'll lay out off of this and then I'll just patch that little tiny hole see how that came out pretty cool huh New stairs. yeah electric stairs now They put a hole, uh, uh, X marks the spot. Not it's not in the middle. Son of a gun. The holes don't line up. That should be the X there. <clears throat> well, three and seven eighths that way. That way it's four and five sixteenths. That one's three and fifteen sixteenths. That one's four and a quarter. I mean, this, these are completely, these are totally concentric. There's no reason for it to be offset one way or the other. Because these are totally round. I just have to figure out what I did up this one and position this one the same way. Because it's like three-eighths of an inch difference. Why does it have to be that way? Chris, huh? <laughs> Sixty-four and thirteen sixteenths. Let me just call it seven eighths. It's uh yeah, it's just a strong back is what it is. It's keep the trusses from tipping. Yeah, it's just this end of it. All you do is you flip these outward, drywall will be here, and then you just push down that. And then to release them, you pick up on this, up, flip them out of the way. Super nice. 
Yeah, and look how they have the keyholes. They're pointing opposite directions. <laughs> That's supposed to work. <laughs> you gotta put it in after. Why put keyholes? Yeah. Anyway, that's not going anywhere. Yep. Another depot run, Chris. No, Mike, it's Chris today. So it's cinnamon rolls for Mike. What's Chris's addiction? Ooh, there you go. Hot dog with some sauerkraut. We should come back stuff on our face with those. Matt, Matt will be jealous. So he can't eat that right now. How's he doing on his diet? He's Say, he's hardcore right now. He's lost a lot of weight. He looks yeah. different. His face is. Yeah. Like you can tell he's lost weight. I don't want him dying in the wall, man. I prefer just to snap him. So, got one last night that was ate my banana. And uh, I, so I baited it with more banana. And that, that sucker, tough sucker, it snapped around his neck and he went 25 feet from where I killed him and hid under the couch and died trapping all. Killed him in the kitchen. It got in through the garage, I'm sure. And uh, killed him in the kitchen. He went all the way into the family room, which is like 25 feet away, and died under the couch. I looked all over for him this morning, but Maureen found him this morning. Freaking out. Three inch. There we go. Nine by three. Dude, look at, look at my arm. Yeah. Soaked. Yeah, what, you've been in Iraq, so is this a, Iraq hot oh, like this? it's dry over there. Oh, this is humid hot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Way worse. This is worse? <laughs> oh gosh. We just were up, up in the attic, 125 degree heat, putting blocking in across from stud to stud so that we can put in the, this bracket. Because there was nothing to screw to. Because if we, we want them, the same on both sides and that stud, that one's on a stud. This one ends up being in between studs. So to have them symmetrical, we had to do that. So that leaves two more speakers to mount and then we can wire everything up. So the other speaker gets mounted here and one here. Six, that's 37 plus three, so 40 feet. Matt's got it figured out, that's about right. 40 feet. So sort of a little diagram. So we have our back ceiling, front ceiling, back wall, side wall, on the left and right. So I'm marking the wires, I'll write on the wire which number is which. So when it comes down here, he'll, he'll know which channel's which, and which set of speakers is which. 31 feet times two, that's 62, plus another 60. That's 122 minus two, so that's 120, plus 80, that's 200, plus 72. So 272 feet. How much did you buy? 300 feet? It's 500. Oh, okay, so we're good. You want to make you know, make left and rights the same, yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. So they're all 31s. These are 29s. These are 40s. These are 36s. So these are 29 feet.
I mean, these brackets seemed like a good idea at the time, but uh, I don't know. I got, I got these darn giant speakers on the wall. Uh, I think for a home theater, it's great, but this is kind of a family room theater. So I don't know, I'm second guessing my, hopefully we'll overcome my second guessing by the amazingness of the audio experience that we're about to get when we listen to these. But it, um, I have the grills on, the grills off. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know about this. Michelle wasn't too excited about the look of this. So, yeah, I mean, it made it a lot easier for us to do the speaker terminal box, but then that makes it even look more terrible when I put it like this. I wonder if I can kick this over a bit and kind of cover it up. I don't think there's enough room. No, it's too tight. So I'm at least pushing it back against the wall like this. I don't know, it's gonna fire down. It's gonna sound great, but is it gonna look douchey? I don't know. What I did, I didn't do it on camera, I did it the other night, but what I did is you know, loosen these screws, pushed it so that it was flat so I could rest the speaker on. I then rested the speaker on, just took a, a marker and just made, made the four marks. And then up underneath here, there's four little wood screws so that's not, it's not as sturdy as I'd like. I almost want to take and drill another hole in the back here. So when we do that speakers in Helen, when you do them on the ceiling, um, they're going to be, you know, that we're going to come through here and put a couple more screws in the back. So that way it's secured here and here. I think it's, it's going to be fine in this setup, but, um, I want to do these same brackets. I'm doing the evoke tens. Uh, I'm going to do those. If you weren't as audio obsessed as I would, just put an in-wall in there. Put an in-wall up there. There is room to put an in-wall there, but it wouldn't sound nearly as good as this is going to sound. You love this, Shelly, this setup? You're not in love with my speakers? No, I'm not in love with them. Yeah, I love the speakers. I just don't like how they look in here, <laughs> you know? That's the, uh, that's the conundrum. What sacrifices are you willing to make for audio? You, none. Me, some. I'm not sure if I'm willing to make this much of a sacrifice. So you're still gonna go through with it and then decide? Yeah, if I'm in love, like Two if- Two weeks you're gonna be coming up with a new idea? Yeah, but that's part of the fun. Let me guess you're gonna rip holes in the wall and put them through so they'll be flush. Yeah. Just kidding. Well, not these, but- no, I was kidding. You know, you, you envision things. You gotta be willing to make mistakes. I don't think this is a mistake. It's just a question of when I get the couch together and I get everything, all the balls touched up and stuff, yeah. how does it look and feel? And then of course, most importantly, how does it sound? So um, I'm gonna do four of these puppies. You know, one for the back and side surrounds and one for the Atmos overhead. Got all these to do. Maybe a banana connect. Not really yet. I'm gonna put these on the wall and then I'll decide. Surround back. Right. Surround back. Left. I want to call this Atmos. I mean, these are presents. So I'm going to call them presents. I'm going to call them height. So let's call it rear height, left, rear height, right. You get the idea. So now I'll spare you the pain. I'm going to strip all the ends of these. <coughs> and I've got to relabel them all because the right's and the left are backwards. But it'd be nice for when I move. I don't have to have wires hanging out the wall like that. I'll tuck it back in the wall. Good. Six. 
This is the Phoenix connector. And so what we're gonna do is put these on the end of these wires like this. And so this Phoenix connector plugs into the back of the CI rated amplifier. So this is what our little umbilical cord is going to look like. We got our Phoenix connectors on one end, our surround back, surround right, surround left, our surround back, left and surround back right are there. And then I'm putting the banana connectors, so the banana connectors will plug right into our in wall thingy. And that way, if I'm ever pulling this out, I can easily yank it out, but put it right back in where it belongs. All right, so I'm gonna piddle through this um, and put this together. Uh, but this is the amplifier here. So this is a eight channel custom install network amplifier. This is the CI 8-150. So I'm gonna have 150 watts per channel. So you can see I have my RCA connections here um, that are going back to my preamp. So I have my nice little umbilical cord. Um, so this is, um, I had to do an XLR to RCA conversion because the surround backs are XLR only out of the NAD, the M17. So the preamp is sending the surround left, surround right, surround, or surround, yeah, surround left, surround right, surround back, surround, oh, surround left, surround right, surround back left, surround back right, that's what I'm missing here. We have our Atmos, our heights, our height channels. And so then this will plug in accordingly, the same way I'll make sure to go into the same sections. So these Phoenix will plug in there and these, uh, these bananas will plug into the wall and I'll have this all tied up. Uh, and then I have my fronts and center on the M22 and M23. So I have two two channel amps. The old M22 is bridged down to a single channel. So it's running as a mono block for the, for the center channel. And then the others left and right. And so those are connected via XLR. Um, so the only disadvantage to this CI amplifier is that it has, um, doesn't have XLR in. So this could be used as a multi-zone amplifier. I'm using it as my surround channel amplifier, but it has the same sort of class D high quality, what do they call it? Uh, I guess it's called something hybrid, in hybrid or something like that. Uh, but I'm gonna hook this all up and I'll show you tomorrow what the setup looks like on Dirac and all that stuff. We'll see how far I get into it. All right, so that's a wrap on the home theater. I'll do a much more formal tour. Uh, I actually ordered a PC laptop. I need to get one. Dirac Live, which is the room calibration software, doesn't do very well on a Mac. Uh, it has issues with levels, and I find that it attenuates the volume level to the point to where you can't really get a whole heck of a lot of amplitude out of the system. So then what you try to do with a Mac is you try to, you try to like do the test tone super, super low volume, which I feel like it doesn't do as good of a job of, of calibrating the room. So I just kind of put it together, everything's in place. Uh, I got to measure out the, the front speakers to get those in position. I do have the center cabinet centered up here, um, but just a quick tour of the system. We have 83 inch Sony, what is this, the A90? Whatever the, the, the flagship version of the uh, 83 inch OLED is what we have here. And then in the, in the cabinet, I, people always yell at me for doing this. I don't mind having the center channel inside the cabinet. <clears throat> it's really hard to find cabinets that are short enough that can still fit some equipment that has at least a decent style uh, where you can put the center channel on top. And so I always put the center channel in and then you know, Dirac will help, help calibrate that a bit. M17 V2i, version 2i they call it. That's the pre-amplifier. I don't know about running the CI amps now. It has a fan that's pretty audible. I mean, you can hear it, you know, you hear it running. But that's the CI 8-150 from NAD. Uh, it's uh, class D amplification, 150 watts per channel. So that's doing the Atmos and the rear speakers. So that's what we ran that to. That's what we're doing, the, the Phoenix plugs. And then over here on the left, 
is where I have, which are silent amps, uh, M22 two-channel, M23 two-channel. The M23 is the new replacement. It's quite a bit taller than the M22. So this is bridged down to mono, which is running the center channel. This is in stereo, which is running the, you know, the fronts. Uh, what I may consider doing is getting a, uh, you know, another M23 and then run the fr all front stage in mono with mono blocks. I really like these amplifiers. These are um, Dynaudio Contour 60s, and I have the uh, Metro Velux cables, uh, and then Dynaudio um, uh, Sub 6s, so two of those. Uh, and then that's the Contour Center. I think it's Contour 25 CI or something like that is the model number. I wanted to get the fronts in the same black, uh, gray ash finish, but they have discontinued it. They just weren't able to get it. Uh, and so I had ordered and waited and waited and waited. I said, you know what, just send me some gloss black. And then my mad scientist creation. <laughs> uh, I, I, it, it looks, you know, this is a home theater setup, not a family room setup. But, you know, you, you make do with what you got. Uh, and so these are uh, gloss white Evoke 20s on the, for the back surround and side surround. And then S4 C65s in the ceiling for Atmos, which of course the in ceiling ones don't do a whole heck of a lot. Now the only thing left in here, I've got to touch up the paint and then maybe mess with uh, how the wiring looks. I don't love how that looks there. And I kind of change the position of that speaker a little bit. It's a little turned turned in a little bit here. Uh, and then the room, the whole room has GIK acoustics. So these are the, I forget what they call this version of it, but these are the monster bass traps. Those rears are monster bass traps with a scatter plate uh, on it so that it doesn't destroy the room uh, and make it super dead. I guess it, it, the, the room can't be dead with a giant window here and a giant opening there. Uh, and then we have the corner soffits going up whenever that 10 feet, something like that. So the room sounds pretty good. It's a, uh, it's a nice setup. And um, I'll do some, uh, maybe I'll, I'll want to do the direct calibration. I'll probably set up the camera. Uh, I just sent a message to my friend Jason Dustel. The TV's broken in. Uh, you want to wait about 100 hours before you do ISF calibration. We're going to have him come out and ISF calibrate it. And, uh, and then my home theater's done. You know, nice little setup that'll hold me over until someday I build my theater office that, uh, that I'm going to set up. And then I also have the, you know, the, the house up in the mountains that uh, will have a more dedicated room. I don't like projectors. I tried that in my last house. I hated it. No projectors. I like a big TV and a nice comfy couch. No theater seating, any of that junk. Uh, and so this, this room is actually pretty comfortable. I like how it's set up. Even though it's right in the middle of the house, it, it turned out pretty nice. So I'll do some uh, demo stuff for you in a, a follow-up video. I know some of you will get real cranky about this. I'm not sure why you'd want to demo on camera with compression on YouTube with a microphone, but I don't know, people seem to like that kind of stuff. We'll find something to play. Maybe just demonetize that video. So anyway, thanks for watching. My house is coming together and uh, we get this place put together. Just time to sell it and go do another one. See you soon.